Good evening, everyone. Hello. Um, I guess this is, is this the virtual Bright Family Screening Room? I don't know. This is my, my disco loft. This is where I do all my, my discussions. Um, I'm Anna Fetter. I'm the Director of Programming in the Visual Media Arts Department at Emerson College. And one of the pleasures of my job is uh, overseeing the Emerson Student Film Festival. Um, I've been at the college for 13 years. So I've had some involvement in 13 editions of the Emerson Film Festival. Um, and this is truly an extraordinary one. Um, it, we were planning on uh, showing this in the physical Bright Family Screening Room back in March, um, only a couple of days um, after uh, everything was shut down. So um, we've been sort of trying to figure out the best way to be able to present this program uh, to you all. And so we partnered uh, with Maureen Hurley, in, um, who is the Director of Student Transitions and Family Programs. Is that correct? Yay. So um, I will let you uh, make a brief introduction, and then we'll get into the conversation. Sure. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Maureen Hurley uh, with Emerson College's Student Transitions and Family Programs. And, you know, the, the challenges of COVID hit all of us, all over our campus, all over the country, all over the world. And um, Anna and I met a few months back and we talked through what it would mean to switch our focus. You know, we've never been able to focus on our filmmakers during our family weekend. It's typically been a live theatrical performance. So in a way, you're getting your turn now. Uh, so thank you, COVID, I guess, right? Um, but we're so excited to have been able to bring all of your amazing films to a very wide audience. Uh, and we were excited about that. Uh, and for this, uh, for this time, for the first time ever, we had a Viewer's Choice Award, a Family Weekend Viewer's Choice Award. And there's a lovely little statue that is going to go out to the winner that we're going to um, announce at the end of the program today. Um, but I'm so excited to be here with you. And uh, thanks for having me. And back to you, Anna. Excellent. Um, okay, so uh, so yeah, so at the very end of the program, we'll announce uh, the audience award winner, which uh, w that person will also get um, software from da, uh, da Vinci Resolve software um, that was donated by alum Dan Ruby, and we'll also be announcing the Marsha Robbins Wealth Women in Film Award, um, which is a long long standing award by uh, created by an alum that has been here longer than I have, and so um, we'll be announcing that at the end of the program as well. So first, I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to introduce themselves, to introduce their film, and tell us a little bit about, you know, the process of making the film, sort of where did the idea come from and, and, and how was it made? So we'll start with Ferris. Well, um, yeah, my name's Ferris. Um, I don't know, I made this film two years ago. I mean, we shot this two years ago, and now in retrospect, I think, I understand that the thing that I was trying to explore is this mythical idea of return. You know, Do you I, I mentioned well, the title of your film? The Ghosts We Left at Home. Um, it's, there are no ghosts in it, which I guess was a confusing part of the title, but it's, it's not a sci-fi and there are no ghosts. Um, yeah, but I, you know, I, I wanted to explore what it felt like for somebody to return, what it felt like for a character to deal with grief. Uh, the character in the film has lost a daughter and he's trying to reconcile with the city, with himself, with God, whatever that means. Um, yeah. Excellent. Chastity. Hi everyone, my name is Chastity. My film is called Missing First Period, which centers around the week in the life of a high school student as she competes for a scholarship while dealing with homelessness. It's based on my own lived experiences during high school. I faced homelessness and housing instability, and that was a huge inspiration for me to create such a nuanced perspective on youth homelessness. Um, I first had the idea to even apply for the BFA with this story, really, um, in 2018. We shot last year, and we just finished wrapping on pre-production, which is really exciting to have it shown in this festival. So I'm really excited. Right. Uh, Gabriel. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Gabe. I directed uh, Hurricane Flora. 
Um, I don't know if you could hear my neighbors like blasting music now. I don't know if you hear that in the background, but <laughs> some background music. Um, yeah, and I, I did it as part of the uh, VMA, the master's program, um, the thesis film. And I kind of wanted, I've been living in New York for eight years. I'm originally from Miami. Uh, and I wanted to kind of tell a story set in my hometown with kind of like family issues. Um, you know, there's always a lot of, uh, my parents are immigrants and grandparents are immigrants. There's a lot of kind of, th the things they went through that kind of affects you growing up too. And it, I just wanted to tell a story that was kind of about, you know, parents who are immigrants and their children and how that, there's always some kind of like things that are left unsaid and things that are kind of kept emotionally at a distance. And you're always trying to learn more about your parents and about your past. So that was kind of the starting point. And I also wanted to do a fun, like disaster kind of movie too. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. I'm Pechi. Hi, uh, my name is Pechi, Pechi Peng. Um, I made, uh, I'm the director of Sunset and Orange. Uh, it was my BFA and I shot it in 2018 and finished it 2019. Um, so I, Sorry, I'm looking at the dog. I'm sitting on a dog with a friend. Sorry. Um, so I wanted to uh, do the story firstly because I really want to make a road trip film because it's just one of my favorite genres. And I saw the story on Chinese social media about uh, how like going uh, to going to another country through a tourist group and then just left there is like one of the predominant ways right now how uh, Chinese people become undocumented immigrants in other countries. It's just like, it's like their predominant way of migrate. So I thought that was really interesting and I want to explore that. And like also the story about like a father-daughter relationship and how uh, this other woman's story kind of like helped the daughter make peace with her own relationship with her dad. So yeah. Excellent. Uh, Yusuf. Hi, uh, my name is Yusuf. I'm the writer director uh, of The New Tenant, um, the thriller one. Uh, so yeah, this was my thesis film for uh, my MFA uh, in the VMA program. And the thing is, I wanted to do it, like I'm originally from Egypt and I had the choice of either going back, coming back to Egypt and do, making a film here, which where I, this is where I am right now, or I w or do it in Boston. And I wanted to make a film in Boston and I wanted to experience making a film in a, in a different country. But of course, like, because I only lived there at this, at that point, like for one year, something like that. So it was hard to find like, what kind of a story you want to tell, like w in a place that you don't hundred percent belong to. So it ended up like very loosely based on one living situation that I've seen that opened lots of questions with all these new companies that rent rooms to different people. So my questions was like, okay, in this day and age, what could happen if a bunch of strangers end up living together? What's the worst that could happen and how can it go? So, and it went from here. Maya. Um, yeah, so my name's Maya. Uh, I go by Mia, so Mia Stegner. Um, and my film is called Society or Me. Um, it was my final project for my theater into film course last fall. Um, and in that class, we looked at like interpretations and adaptations of stories um, that started as like plays or other mediums and then were turned into films. Um, so my project for that was sort of a an adaptation or was an adaptation in and of itself um, and was took the audio from a film adaptation of a play called A Doll's House that we read in that class. Um, so I wanted to or I had the idea to use like actual dolls um, for that and then sort of reenact I guess the a scene from A Doll's House. Um, so I used my mom's old dolls dolls in her old dollhouse and um, sort of took a stop motion approach and yeah. <laughs> Dylan. Hi, uh, I'm Dylan and uh, my film was The Good Get. So that was the sort of the noir musical one. 
Uh, and I mean, <laughs> 2019 seems like such a fever dream now. Um, so let me think. Oh, well, I, I so I, I did it for, um, for the directing image and sound class. And I mean, I always, I always loved MGM musicals, you know, singing in the rain and stuff. So that always got me. And I mean, up until, up until this project, I, I, I have to be honest, most of the things I think I've approached in the past, I've just sort of done because, you know, I wanted to do this little small thing for fun or whatever. And I think around this time I was, I was thinking, you know, I should actually maybe think a little bit about the structure. And I, I sort of, the way I guess I would describe it was that I tried to take the choreography and base it off of like a David Attenborough nature documentary. Um, so it's essentially, you know, like, like the, like a mating ritual, but with detectives is the way I would describe it. Excellent. So for folks who joined, um, I'm going to ask maybe two more questions and then open it up to your question. So feel free to put them either in the chat or in the Q and A section. And the way it's going to work is, uh, if I call on you, if it's your question, if you've not submitted it anonymously, then I'll ask if you want to ask your question. And in which case I will turn on your video and audio so we can have a little bit of interaction. So if you're willing to ask your own question, uh, I just ask that you sort of raise your hand digitally. If you go over to your name, you can, there's a button where you can sort of raise hand. Um, so we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. Um, I just want to ask a, a few more questions. Um, so for everyone, um, what did you learn in the, in the, in the process of, because this is an, 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 an edu educational uh, film series, I'm kind of curious. I know some of you made them for classes, some for capstone projects, but sort of what did you, you know, it, what did you learn and is there something you might have done differently? And we could just go around again. Ferris, do you want to? Sure, I need a second thing. I mean, I think the thing that I, I now is like most present is that I, I mean, the final product is very important to me, but it, I realize it takes so long to make a film that if my, uh, you know, um, if I only get pleasure from one evening when it premieres, then I'm living one day in, in two years and that's, and that doesn't work for me. And, and so process, you know, process over everything unapologetically, I, I, I want to make films about things that matter to me and use the excuse of the actual production to gather people and collaborators and, and crew and cast and, and have conversations about it and hopefully find some answers. Lovely. Um, I don't remember where, which order I wanted, Chastity? I think um, something that really stood out to me throughout the process of creating this film was the importance of diversity and inclusion. And I know that's such, uh, you know, a buzzword right now, especially, but I think that really and truly surrounding myself with the crew and a, a cast that felt reflected by the work and by the script really empowered me to make it as nuanced as possible, something that anyone could watch and connect to in a sense. And I think that was really powerful for me to see how everyone connected to something that was really personal to me in such you know, different ways. And I think really just continuing to have people as a director um, that you can collaborate with that are not afraid to challenge your perspective and really um, talk about how your work kind of fits into a larger landscape of an, any narrative, whether it's film, life, and et cetera. Excellent. Gabriel? Uh, yeah, so what I learned the most, I guess, from the process of making it was um, just in general, you're, it's always a very collaborative medium and you're always, you know, you work with your crew and cast and everything. It's not just one person making something. But I learned that like you really benefit a lot from at the end of the day, just kind of, you know, after you've done all the work for the day, you sit back and just talk with your crew and with your cast and kind of go through what everyone went through in the day and also what you know could potentially what's coming up next in the next day so for example Yusuf was actually my uh the kind of line producer and produce like he did a million things on set <laughs> but um there was one night we had just shot a scene and we were all tired whatever and we hung out a little later and we're talking there outside and I clicked on me I'm like wait a minute like we're going from one scene to the next and in the script this the transition made sense 
but you know doing it you know putting it on its feet and actually shooting it at something else so you're like wait a minute <laughs> this doesn't connect like there's no way these two scenes are gonna flow into the next into the other one so we kind of at that moment i just realized all right i'm gonna have to write a little transition scene here that we can shoot tomorrow really quickly as a pickup so just things like that where it's like there's constantly going to be something that's going to pop up while you're shooting and you just have to always kind of be on your toes and ready to just sort of improvise a creative solution to anything going on on set. That was a huge lesson I got from that. Uh, Um I think, so we shot the film in late July in Nevada in deserts and it was like over a hundred degrees all the time. And I think I was so caught up with like just all the stuff going on that I was like very busy. And I think what I learned the most when I like after shooting, when I reflect on that uh, journey was just like to show compassion and gratitude, not just on screen for your characters, for your actors, but also for your crew. Cause like for student films, like everyone's working for free and you don't know how valuable, how like hard they work until like you enter the real world and realize how much money they should be earning by helping you, but they're doing it for free. So I think that was like one of my biggest uh, takeaways. And also just like for young filmmakers, ambitious filmmakers in general, just like um, the film can always be shorter than how you imagine it be. Like when I look back, I always thought I'm like, this can be as it can be a 15 minute short, but I somehow made it like 25 or something. So that's, yeah, that's my two biggest takeaway. As a, as a festival curator of many, many years, I will echo that. It's always better to make your film shorter. It's very rare that I see a film and I say, wow, that could have been five minutes longer. Often it's, sometimes it's the right length, but sometimes yes, yes, for sure. Um, so let's see, uh, Yusuf. So, yeah, I mean, with my, with the new tenant, I guess this time, I, like I had the privilege of, of time to prepare a bit because I knew when I, when I had to graduate and I knew when I had to finish. So I had to plan that backwards. Like, okay, this is the finish line. So when do we need to start and when do we need to be where? So we can finish at this time. So I gave myself enough time. And the beauty of this, that, made the, the whole process more organic so you come up with a draft second third draft and it looks good you think that it's good and it's good enough it's good enough to work on but as you're working on the movie as you're prepping for it as you're casting as you're scouting for locations and stuff like that and as you're recruiting crew you're developing it as you're working with your actors in 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 the, re in the rehearsals you keep finding things with them so it keeps moving. So like when I was looking, so like six, if you've seen the film, more than 60% of it takes, takes place in one apartment. So that apartment had to be like a character and I, I didn't want to build the set. It, like it would take me so much time and money to make it look good, believable and, and lots and lots of work. So I thought, okay, let's find a place. So in this process, you can't have the place that you dream of. You see places and then you pick the one that inspires you more like okay here I can play and do do this and that here I can do this and that which which film do I prefer like which which one of those because they're completely different movies so which one do you want do I want to watch even when you like even when I was like shooting exteriors because it, it 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 was the fall and you know how Boston is like it's so unpredictable with the weather so my decision was early on let's deal with what we have if it's a sunny day it has the aesthetics if it's overcast Let's work with the other thing. If it's rainy, that's another thing. And like you do your work and you do and you prep, you prepare everything and leave just a little door open for the film to make itself at some point. Maya. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing I learned was just like patience um, and also like just flexibility, like with working with the dolls and like sort of stop motion, especially since I hadn't really done any sort of stop motion before. And in a way it's, it's more like photography almost than like true stop motion. Cause it's not like a, a 30 frame per second or anything. It's like kind of, I'm very loose with like um, 
what shots I hold and like how how the pacing goes just like based on what what was feasible and also like how I wanted it to to feel um but I think just the patience of like sort of moving like working with the physical dolls and like moving them and then taking the picture and like moving them like is a, a very sort of tedious process um and then also just like flexibility of like um oh this this doll that I was going to use doesn't really stand up on its own so how am I gonna get it to look the way I want um or if I'm I have at one point she's like sewing and I sort of just like leaned the thread against the needle and then it sort of like stuck naturally to the fabric um but it was a little bit tough to <laughs> to like get it lined up the way I wanted it um and so just sort of being being kind to yourself if things don't go perfect the first time and um just having patience which I think is especially true with something like stop motion but also um is something that I can now apply to to any any other um creative endeavor that requires problem solving or patience at times so Awesome. Dylan. You gotta have like so much fun doing and I mean I think if you're if you're passionate about what you're doing and you really like the material or anything or like working with the actors that's not that hard but I, I, I what everyone sort of as, as I think alluded to is that is shit hits the fan and it hits the fan quick especially when you're you know you're, you're 21 or 22 or however old you are and you're just sort of starting out trying to make this. Uh, we we shot this on the wharf um, the, the the Haba at, um, you know, it was windy. I, I put Tarina and Tanner through so much and, and it really speaks to just, I mean, I don't even know what the word to describe it is, but, but the fact that they're so, they were so willing to, without skin, having skin in the game, without having a stake in this project, so willing to actually uh, uh, put themselves up to, to, to the task of doing it. I mean, it was very grateful. And, uh, you know, it means, it means I need to be the most, in, in many ways, you have to be the most positive person on set because you're setting the tone. And if you hate it, if you're the one who's complaining about the wind, then, any, then no one else is going to want to do it. Yes. <laughs> so um, we have a question from uh, Jan Roberts Breslin. Jan, do you want to ask your question? Can we turn your camera on? Hold on, I'm going to allow you to talk. Oh, would you like to ask your question, Jan? Sure. Okay, so let me, let me, uh, hold on. I'm going to promote you to panelists so we can see you. So now you should be able to turn your camera on. I know this is a little, a little strange. There we oh, go. Oh, there we ah, are. There I am. Hi. Oh, Jim. Hi. Well, I would really like to congratulate everybody for some incredible work. I was just blown away by the films. I have to say a special shout out to Ferris and Gabe and Yusef, who I know well and miss at, at this point. I, I'm wondering, it's, I've been thinking about this because in a way I feel you all were so lucky to be able to finish your films because I'm working now with students who were getting ready to shoot right when the pandemic started or, or planning to shoot a bit into it and it's, it's very complicated and they're having to make a lot of adjustments and changes and, and work around it. And I, I guess I'm wondering how you plan to move forward, both with these films that you've finished and also with your, with your next projects, given the craziness that is where we live right now. So who wants to take that first? Ferris, go ahead. Yeah, I, it's, it's also very interesting because we, we premiered with a film at Oberhausen Festival and then it, it became an online edition, which was very disappointing. And then we had a bunch of festivals cancel. But now it's also very interesting because, maybe, because it's, it's this time where we get to question structures that are, that are in place. Um, and, and maybe the order of how thing, you know, of how things usually work of shooting a film and then going to the festival circuit is not necessarily the only way, right? And it's not necessarily the only, um, and I'm not referring to streaming or any, or anything else. I'm just like, uh, in, in terms of like the mindset of why the films are made and for what purpose, uh, I found it very interesting. I mean, through a lot of disappointment, uh, you know, and heartbreak, I, I think it's, in some way, it's very interesting, you know. 
yeah, to think about why we make the films, if not for the festivals. Right. Yeah, yeah, I find it interesting too, because like, um, I made the, my film sort of earlier. So I had the, like a sort of a festival run um, when last year, like we premiered at LA Shorts and then we did a bunch of mostly like festivals in LA and like some elsewhere. But I got to like attend them in person. And I've been to like bigger film festivals like TIFF or like Calorie Valley before. And it was interesting because like right now, like this weekend is like AFI Fest and I'm like attending and like looking through movies uh, online. And it just such a different experience. I I, I agree with what uh, Farah said that there are things that didn't work before that um, through this whole situation could be improved better. But I just think the in theater experience has so much value for both the audience and the filmmakers that I really wish um, it can get back to where it was. Uh, at least like the in-person part soon. Yeah, I'm just gonna echo that as an exhibitor. I miss being in a space with people and the energy of people responding to something in real time. And now it's like, you're just, it's very disconnected. Someone's gonna figure out a way to make this better, at least in the short term, in terms of, you know, finding ways to connect people. But for now, it just, it feels really disconnected. Everyone's sort of watching in their own little silos and then, you know, maybe doing other things and maybe stopping, like not having, not even having a consistent experience. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it's a little tough. Are there other, are there folks want to comment on this? I don't know if, if everybody's already commented. Sorry, just one thing on that. I just, I just wanted to, it's, I, I wasn't even talking about, you know, exhibition. I, I meant more, I think, you know, and, and I probably know this best, uh, you know, curating a program is in some ways also a political um, act. You know, there's a lot of politics in festivals. And I think, and, and that in turn at some point, you know, because we know that Cannes is sort of, and like, you know, Berlin Film Festival and, and a bunch of festivals around the world are like the standard of what a good film is. That kind of in turn become curates the actual the, the creation of the film, right? Because you try to create films that would work for these fest festivals, which are uh, inherently and you know for you know naturally political. And so I think questioning that is the interesting part, and not necessarily how the film is shown. No, that's an excellent wanna, excellent point. Yeah, yes. and, and I, I want to add something over that since we're talking about festivals and and programming. Yes, I mean politics have like it, it does play a role but not only like one who's making the movie like who's the like if when it comes to feature films like who's the studio behind it or who's the distributor who's the sales agent of course that helps a lot a film more than another to get in but also let's say that you're creating a program and you're picking random films that you don't know you have, you have no idea of who made them sometimes you don't take a film not because you didn't like it sometimes a curator can actually take this film over the other film that he preferred because it's not only about the film, it's about the whole, yeah. like the whole program of it. So you say, yes, I know I wanted to take it, but I have another film that is, that is like that already. But this other one, in, 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 for the sake of like the diversity of genre or taste, I, I, I need this other film because it's, it's gonna have its audience as well or the duration, because yes, I only have a seven minute slot, so now I'm gonna look for the seven minutes, this other one is 25. I mean, my film is 20, so I've shot myself in the foot over there. So uh, so it's it's many, many things, like like for everyone who's hearing, who's making films, be sure that not only, not, not being taken in a, not being selected in a festival doesn't mean that they, did, that they disliked your film. It meant that they didn't, put it in the program for many, it could be that they didn't like your film, this is something, but there are many, many, many other reasons beside politics as well for not picking the film. It has to do with the whole programming system. And you said also, looking also, for. also talking as a curator, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the job, I'm actually handling, in, in, because it's an international festival, I'm actually handling the films from the North and Latin America. And I've been seeing lots of those. So, and I've been seeing how the whole thing is working. So yes, it, it's, it's a tough job. And you get to say to some films that you really like, I'm not gonna have this film, it breaks my heart, but you're gonna do that at the end of the day. So. 
No, that's a really important point. Um, I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how, how many of you have experience with festivals and, and what kind of experience you have with festivals, but it's really, really important to know, particularly for a short film, you know, it's all about context. It's all about where they can put it. And when you talk about length and you said use of about 20 minutes being difficult, it's difficult because, you know, in a, in a, in a shorts program, it kind of has to be the anchor in a way. Um, but it also is too long to go in front of a feature. And so, you know, when you make a film that goes beyond 15 minutes, even beyond 10 minutes, you're really limiting yourself in terms of where that can, can live in a film festival. But, um, but I know Ferris had a, a, a sort of a, a, a different take and it was about, you know, uh, your short, like now that everything has sort of been shifted in the world of film festivals, that it actually, I think, leaves opportunities for films that maybe don't have that seal of approval from one of the huge festivals like Berlin, Cannes, Toronto, AFM, um, what am I missing? Um, Sundance. Um, was that kind of what the point you were making, Ferris? Yeah. I also do want to go off on a slight tangent and talk about um, accessibility. I think piggybacking a little bit about what you were just saying. I do think, well, this is my first kind of festival run since I recently graduated. And I do think that there is something to be said about who can actually go or who were the people who were going to these in-person festivals, you know, those really big festivals like Berlin or Sundance or Cannes, you know, like the audience it attracts is definitely very different than the audience that are, is being attracted now where things are all digital and online. I do think that for me, at least, it's more powerful. That, that, that's one of the pros for me is that it feels more powerful in the audience. I, ca I feel like I have more control of the audience and who views my work right now and the way it's kind of shared amongst different people. So I do think that's one positive thing that's happening in this situation, even though people are in their own silos, as you said, and kind of disjointed, there's so much more people who are taking an interest in films, people who never really thought of themselves as someone who would go to a film festival, now have that chance to um, limit themselves from that social barrier of like aesthetics, like how do you, what does a film festival audience look like, you know, I, I do think that is one positive now. Oh yeah, and, and accessibility on multiple levels. I mean, you can talk about the folks who wouldn't have been able to travel to Berlin, you know, for financial reasons or couldn't, you know, travel because of family obligations or work or, or and then you can talk about, you know, accessibility from the standpoint of who can get to a physical cinema space, you know, and who can occupy those spaces and, you know, is it set up for them? And so, you know, we're sort of, I'm sort of very, very um, sort of stepping into the, the world of making this, at least the virtual space more accessible and certainly the physical space as well, but adding captioning. So all of the programs, all of your films were captioned, um, had closed captioning available. Um, and we have someone captioning uh, the conversation tonight. And it's just like, there's a, and this is something that's, that's a big conversation at exhibition right now is, you know, it's sort of been a real push to think about accessibility on every level, you know, not, you know, I mean, sort of physical accessibility, um, but, you know, financial, like all of the ways in which these spaces have not, you know, have not been open or welcoming to, to, to people for all sorts of reasons. And so it's like, it's a, it is a, you know, if you wanna look at the positive in all of this, certainly these conversations and people really starting to think, like I went to IDA, this International Documentary Association conference that I've never been to before. I didn't have the funds to go. I didn't, you know, and suddenly they made it free and it became, and you know, for even the folks who've been going in the physical space for years and years and years, a much richer event because of all these people who had never been, you know, for whatever reason could now access this space. So, yeah, that is really, really important to think about. So were there other folks that wanted to answer that? Did everyone get a chance to? Maya. Um, I wanna actually speak to the like sort of pros and cons um, or, or one of the pros of sort of things having to be pushed like digital or online. 
is, um, and also to answer the question of what I'm working on right now, um, over the summer, I wrote a script um, that got like picked up by Full Fathom at Emerson, which is a, a student run group that like helps kind of fund and produce people's projects. Um, and am, am now directing that. And even though I'm like completely online this semester, I'm home in Colorado right now, I'm still able to be directing that. Um, and it's mostly because it's like animated. It's an animated children's musical. Um, so we're able to sort of do it without ever all being in the same room, which has really been interesting. Um, there's like 47 of us that are involved and we just like communicate on Discord. Um, and we're working with like, we found animators from like other film schools um, that have joined us and like just gave us a lot more flexibility, even though it's it's definitely challenging to like not be able to meet in the same room. Um, but like, it's, it's crazy, like how much we've actually been able to do um, completely like online. Some of us are on campus, a lot of us aren't. Um, there's people from other schools, as I mentioned. So that's been um, really, nice I guess to like still be able to to see how collaboration can work um even even though like in other ways I feel isolated from like Emerson um or just like from my peers that's been a way that I can still um interact with other people just like in terms of the the social aspect um of like isolation right now but also to st to still be able to like be involved and like be working on something um and I don't know, is there has shown me like how collaboration can still work even in a world where it like it feels very challenging right now um, to do that. So yeah. Excellent. Well, we have to wrap up soon. So I want to invite Maureen back. Um, are you still there, Maureen? You want to turn your video on and announce the audience award am. winner? Excellent. Do you want do you want to put your video on? Got it. <laughs> it's saying unable to start my video so let's oh there you are go go ahead. Ahead. oh hello again everyone so uh, i am delighted that we were able to have this contest this year and we have a lovely award for somebody to proudly display and i'm very pleased to announce that Hurricane Flora by Gabe de, Veron, de Verona, pardon me, has won our Family Weekend Award. And um, we're, we're just really proud of you and proud of all of you. It was amazing to see your work. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, Maureen. And I wanted to announce um, the uh, award, Women in Film Award. So. I don't have all of the history of this award, uh, but like I said, I think it's been around since the beginning of the film festival. Um, Dr. Marsha Robbins Welf, um, uh, it's a $2,500 award that's given out every year. And the last few years, it's been split between two filmmakers because there've been, you know, so many phenomenal filmmakers. Um, and so uh, the, the award this year goes to Chastity David for Missing First Period and to Peche Peng uh, suntanned orange. So congratulations, both of you. I sent your checks out, as you know, a little while ago. So you guys got the heads up because I, I had felt bad that you were supposed to get that money back in the spring. And it, you know, of course it sort of fell by the wayside. So congratulations to the both of you. Your films were phenomenal. And I just wanted to ask as we wrap up, is there another way to see your film? Because the, the film series that we had online access started on Friday, it was 48 hours. Those films are no longer online through us. But I'm wondering if folks really like the film and want people to recommend it, is there another place they can see the film? And anybody can go. Gabe, did you want to say something? Well, I mean, I, I have it like on a private Vimeo <laughs> thing, because still all the film festivals, I'm not sure how they're, I would imagine like this year, they're gonna be chill about the whole like, screening it before <laughs> because yeah, they are definitely <laughs> so yeah i mean it whoever wants to see it i can send links you know that i would still keep it private i prefer not to you know yeah, share yeah. it around everywhere but i'm willing you know whoever is interested can shoot them a link that's no problem excellent anyone else um yeah it's the i mean uh, just as gabe said it's it's hard at this point to share a public link but um we have a page for the film if you want to follow because we'll keep posting about 
any online events in case like because that's the beauty of this whole like that's the perks of of what we're in right now is that instead of you have to be in boston to attend this event now you can attend it from wherever you are so with these other events so I'll, we'll keep posting about those unless it's coming to a city near you excellent anybody else have a presence for their film Chastity, My, mine's just up on youtube oh i'm sorry i'm sorry Chastity. that's okay go ahead <laughs> no, no yeah My, mine's mine's just up on youtube uh you know in public it's the good get if you uh, are interested uh yeah there's a black and white and a colored version excellent chastity yeah we same as yousef and gabriel i have private links um that i've sent to donors and we have multiple social media pages to let everyone know when it's gonna be out or in someone's neighborhood yeah Mine is just on Vimeo. Um, so just Google the name of the short or my name, it should pop up. I did a bad job of uh, marketing. Yeah, we, I have a social media page for it. So if you follow Hurricane Flora on Instagram, that's there. Or you can follow my page too. It's the same thing, Captain Dumpty. Excellent. Ferris? Do you yes. know the screenings? Private, private to no, no page. No page. Okay. Yeah. So how do people find out if it's showing in another festival? Uh, well, they, they don't. No, I mean, oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But you know, I, I still, I don't know. Should we send you checks? Should they send you checks for, do you, do you have a video on demand, like 10 bucks for one viewing, anything like that? No, I just send it privately to whoever asks. I'm just okay. available privately, not, not okay. publicly. That's fair. Maya? Um, yeah, so mine is on Vimeo. It's also just on YouTube, um, Society or Me. Um, and then my name is Mia Stegner on there. So you can also search and just find my page. Um, not really like a social media presence for that one since it was more for a class, but the one I'm working on now, if people are curious about looking at that, um, we're putting out updates and stuff on Instagram. It's just at rabbits under the shed. It's the title, so. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, thank you. Did everyone get to speak? Everyone got to speak. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't forget anybody. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your films. I, 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 I say this, and I don't say this lately. This was really a phenomenal program. Everything was brilliant. You were all brilliant. And Jan says, all the best to you. Be well and speak your power. So congratulations to the award winners. Congratulations to everyone else. And good luck with this and future projects. Have a lovely evening. Good night to those who join.